what just showed up on the front doorstep. And of course, it's cloudy. All right. So, my name is Dylan O'Donnell and I'm addicted to speed. I have a Celestron Rasa 8 inch. Why would I possibly get one of those when I already have the 11 inch? I just wanted to introduce this exciting new product from Celestron. This is not a sponsored video. Celestron have just sent me their latest telescope and I'm going to unbox it for you and have a talk about the new 8 inch Rasa. F2 imaging for the masses. My name is, I've already done that. You're watching Star Stuff. light pollution filter they include with the Rasa 8. Um, I'm not sure if they included this with the 11 or the 36. I certainly didn't get one. Uh, so this is new for me, but uh, very useful, if you, especially if you're in town or anywhere near any kind of urban light pollution. Having a light pollution filter will cut back some of that excess light spilling into the sensor. And if you're interested, there is the band pass. You can see it's letting things through in the infrared, red, green and blue end of the spectrum and cutting out these parts in the middle which are excess light from uh, ambient light around your neighbourhood. And here it is, the Celestron Ro Ackerman F2 Schmidt Astrograph which we call Rasa down here in Australia or Rasa or however you like to pronounce it. I already have an 11 inch. I've already used Hyperstar on the nine and a quarter. Um, so did I really need this one? So let's go through it. Let's talk about the differences. Just for size comparison, here is my nine and a quarter. So you can see the eight is much more diminutive than the nine and a quarter. And this one's a lot heavier as well. The eight is definitely much better for portability. Now in case it isn't obvious for the American viewers, eight inches is 20 centimeters in anywhere in the rest of the civilized world. Eight inches of course referring to the size of the primary mirror at the back here. Uh, with my nine and a quarter we're out to here, with the 11 inch Rasa we're out to here, and with the excellent name for the Rasa 36 we're talking about 36 centimeters or 14 inches as we'd traditionally call the Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain range. Of course, nobody knows why Americans still use the imperial measurement system and it's a welcome change to hear Celestron describe the Rasa 14 inch as the Rasa 36 because indeed the rest of the world thinks in centimeters. In fact, when I think about eight inch, nine inch, 14 inch, they literally don't mean much to me at all. I can't visualize those measurements because all of us in the rest of the world grew up with 30 centimeter rulers at school and so for us to visualize something like 20 centimeters is very very easy so it would be good to see that decimal metric system adopted not just in telescopes but everything I did say i am addicted to speed and once you image at f2, it's very hard to go backwards and start imaging back at f10 with the Schmidt Cassegrains or even with the reducers imaging at f7. It's still doable, of course, but the whole idea of being able to get out quickly and do a really quick but deep image is really, really satisfying. So, of course, as soon as I heard that this would be available, I reached out to Celeste and asked if I could buy one ahead of time and they were kind enough to send me one that um, has already been used and already been tested and some of the test images for this product will have come from this one and uh, now it's mine. Now I will set this up and do a proper review with more images later but I just wanted to do the unboxing first because there's not a lot of information at least on YouTube yet and there should be. notice at the back here where we normally have the mirror lock they're no longer there even though the base plate still has the holes for them there is literally nothing there we do have the cooling fan which is also on the 11 inch and I do use sometimes but to be honest um, 
I just leave my observatory open and things just stabilize and the temperature naturally drops over time anyway. I get away without using the cooling fan much at all, but that might be something of interest to you if you're going out to a remote location, setting up quickly and you've taken it out from a hot car or something like that. The standard focus knob is here. However, this can now be replaced with the new Celestron Focuser, which is fantastic. Uh, if you haven't heard about the Focuser, I'll put the link to the video down below. You can now replace this knob with the motor focus system, which means you can focus automatically through software or by using the hand controller. No need to twiddle with the knobs. You can see that there are some vents as well, which helps air flow throughout the rasa, and that also helps stabilize the temperature inside and outside quickly. If you don't have the temperature stabilized, then what you'll find is that your focus drifts out throughout the night. So it is nice to have the internal and external temperatures stabilized as quickly as possible before you do your imaging run. If you don't, you just have to remember to focus every 10, 15 minutes. I do know that on the 11 inch version, the focus, the critical focus was very, very small. So it was very difficult to focus. I believe that they've, they've made that range just a little wider. So this one should be a little easy to focus. However, now that I'm using the motor focus anyway, that's sort of a, not really a problem. And when you are in focus, the images are really, really sharp. Let's have a look at the front. Now, of course, being a Raza, this is where all the fun happens. Your camera is going to be up the front here, so you want a camera that doesn't obstruct too much of the light coming in. Of course, it's counterintuitive having your camera up the front here, but you have the camera and then your cable's running out, and it doesn't block too much light at all. It still works really well. Um, however, you do have to think about your image train being up the front here. Well, there's another little box of goodies here that they send you. Um, there is a battery pack, which seems rather primitive, if you're going to use the cooling fan, you've probably got some sort of power management set up anyway, putting it into your cigarette lighter adapter or 12 volt power generally. And here we have the two threads that we can attach to the front here. We've got a smaller camera adapter for the very small cameras and the standard M42 thread size, which will fit most cameras. Now the Rasa 8 isn't geared up for full frame cameras or DSLRs. About ASPC is the max and you can use like Sony and Canon mirrorless cameras but it really is designed for this smaller APS-C size sensor. Uh, so let's see if we can get this installed. That looks pretty good. You can unscrew the thread a bit so that you can move your camera around if you need to and then tighten it back on. I'll just go see if I've got a camera. Here's a QHY12. Perfect camera for this sort of thing. Color, one shot. And we're ready to go. Look at that rust there. That's what I get for living near the beach. First world problem. So unless I'm mistaken, it looks like the filter that they give you can just pop straight in here. And that would be inserted into the image train just there like that. Um, which is pretty easy, but makes it pretty hard to change filters. Uh, in between shots, uh, which is why I use the Hyperstar image filter draw system on my other Rasa. I'm not sure that that system is going to work with this, so I will review that later when I get to the actual first light review on that one. So what else is there to say about the Rasa 8? Well, it does have a new focus system. So typically when you twiddle the focus knob at the back here, uh, if you're looking at a star on your camera or something like that, you notice that the star shifts, which is called focus shift. Uh, it's pretty annoying, especially if you frame something exactly and then you focus and it goes out from the framing that you set up. Um, that has been eliminated with this. Using gears and fancy stuff that I really don't have any idea about, they managed to eliminate the focus shift effect altogether. if you are guiding you will need to get a rail on top to put your guide scope because off-axis guiding is not something that you'd be able to do the image train is at the front here they say that you can get away without guiding of course and if you do have a good mount like the CGX or the CGXL um, you won't need to guide with a scope like this it's so fast you can get away with doing 30 second exposures and they'll be quite deep um, however if you're like me 
you like to push the envelope a little bit and do 10 minute exposures with a rasa, which is the equivalent of doing like hour long exposures on a Schmidt Cassegrain and F10. Uh, so it's a really impressive deep exposure, which is what I really like about the rasas. So do get yourself some sort of guiding solution for this if you're into that sort of thing. about Rasa technology. Uh, that was written before the Rasa 8 was out, but it does cover the Rasa 36 and the Rasa 11 inch. The main difference between those and this one is the fact that this is smaller, we have less of a usable image circle to use, uh, which is why we can't use full frame sensors or DSLR cameras. There's a non-obstruction area uh, within here where there's an ideal distance for the chip to be. And if the chip is too far back because it's pushed out because of the need for a mirror, that can cause obstruction on the sides of that image circle, which is why this is not geared up for that sort of thing. This is a cheap alternative to the 11 inch Rasa, which I would definitely spring for if you have the funds because of that greater image circle, you've got more of an upgrade path so that you can buy a bigger camera or a full frame camera later on and the focal length is just a lot tighter. The focal length for this one is about 400 millimeters. So you can think about this as a big hefty 400 millimeter lens on a camera, but with far greater optical quality without the chromatic aberration and coma and all the things you'd expect with a lens. And really uh, an expensive L series lens at that 400 millimeters is going to cost you about the same as one of these anyway. The 11 inch is 620 millimeters and the Rasa 36, the big daddy of them all, comes in at 790 millimeters. So the reason I wanted this one is for that wider frame. Now I probably should have said this right up the front, but I just assumed it was super obvious this is not for visual. I'm sorry visual guys. This is just for my viewers on team astrophotography. There is no place for an eyepiece on a Rasa. This is a dedicated astrograph telescope. It really is just for taking pictures. Uh, and really we have weak pathetic human eyes. Why would you want to degrade the maximum potential of a telescope by using your soft fleshy puny eyeballs anyway? Uh, we've got beautiful cameras which are sensitive to infrared and a wide spectrum. We should be using those with deep exposures to get the most out of our visual experience with the night sky. Just for comparison, here's the 8 compared to the 11. Uh, really easy to carry around by myself. I can carry this one and put this one on by myself, but only because I'm a huge beefcake. I would hate to be doing this once I reach retirement age. I'd at least need a friend. So that's about it. Everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>